Hey all, people have been asking for uh, a lesson on some of the licks from uh, the Yaya's version of Carol, which is a little bit different from the album version from a few years earlier. Uh, much better in my opinion in 69. But um, uh, I figured I'd go through some of the licks, not, not note for note and phrase for phrase, but just to give you a little bit of an idea of how to do some of those, because once you get the the building blocks of it, then you can either come up with your own uh, licks or learn them from listening to the record. But we'll get right into it. I think he's actually using the neck pickup, but for the sake of clarity and actually hearing how it's doing, I'll do it on the bridge pickup on this. <laughs> and I think he probably was using the, in fact, I think there's there's film footage of it. He's using that Lucite uh, Dan Armstrong guitar, but we'll use it. That's part for it. Uh, and it starts with this little thing. And then into up to D. So it's in A. And uh, with you know with Chuck Berry songs, you can move that, you can do it. Or you could do it down in G. do it anywhere up and down the neck. Um, I guess uh, Chuck tended to use G a lot, which I mean that stretch of one, two, three, four frets obviously is, is harder to do <laughs> than the ones up the neck, but he had the hands of a god. So uh, for the rest of us mere mortals, A is actually not so bad. You can make that stretch pretty easy. So let's start with the little uh, opening lick. There's some double stops which basically means uh, you know two strings at a time um, which is a fancy sounding word to phrase but it, it's not as difficult as it sounds. So to start this little part that goes right that little opening phrase run up on the slide up on the G string up to six. You don't have to slide it way up, just do maybe even one fret. As long as you're sliding into it. So it goes G at six, B at five, B at seven, then it's the B and the E both at five. And it sounds more difficult. It sounds like there's more going on than there really is. And then start it over again. The second time, the first time through, you're doing B and E at five. Second time through, you're doing G and B at five. And then again. That little thing is uh, the G and the B at the seventh fret bent up. Now, if you watch that um, Hail Hail Rock and Roll movie, you can see that Keith and Chuck get into a little debate over that little that little lick, and Chuck says it's supposed to go. Like it should already be bent up when you hit it, <laughs> and Keith says, no, it should start, you should hear it bend up. Uh, the stones, Keith does it bent up. So you hear the whole thing. <laughs> That's actually the funniest part of that movie. So we're, so far we got. Whoops, hold on. Start from the beginning right here. So now we're into a D. Right, that's the, in fact, I'm pretty sure Keith, instead of going up to D here, he goes. And that hip 
probably do the E up here instead of here. Because I'm, I'm guessing that's because he likes to do this and do it one more fret up. And doing that five fret uh, reach is easier to do up here than down here. <laughs> so, um, although Chuck, when he does them, he does them all down here. I mean, Chuck does. <laughs> Uh, which is fine if you're playing like two or three songs, but if you're playing a bar gig all night, you probably don't want to be doing that because your hand will get all cramped up. But uh, Keith would do it like this. And you know what that is. That's just your little boogie woogie. It's fifths. Uh, the A string at the fifth, the E, the sorry, E string at the fifth, A string at the seventh, and then on and off at the two frets up on the A string. And you can move everything up one string. So we've got the intro. So let's uh, work on some of the riffs in between, I guess, or, or at least riffs that are like the ones in between. Because uh, Keith is basically, you, you can hear Mick Taylor doing, holding down most of the rhythm parts, and he'll do some licks in between, but Keith is basically doing both. <laughs> stuff like that then he'll go back he's just filling in the, the phrases in between so uh, one of them is this that, that thing this comes back a bunch of times through the song that kind of stuff so uh, hit the B and the E at the fifth we're gonna learn this so that's uh, B and E at the fifth that's your friend G and B at the seven, just the one you just bent up, except now you're just doing it without bending it. That part here is G and B at the fifth, and just hammer on the G string one fret up while you're also hitting, you know, you, that B still ring. Then it's B and E at the fifth. Just, just like you started the song, slide G up to 6th, then B and E at the 5th. There's also this one that he uses a lot. He does sort of a... He does that uh, unison bend, so you got your... It's one that's all over rock music. Uh, play the B string at the fifth and then bend the G string at the seventh up. So they're at the same, so eventually they're the same note, so you strike them both. He also does that version, which is the G and the B. He does this all over the place. In fact, if you listen to a lot of Keith's, you know, when he does Chuck Berry soloing, He'll uh, do, he'll just hit uh, double stops through the whole thing. You know, that's just uh, on the B and E string, then the G and B, then the D and G, and then the A and D. You know, all that kind of stuff. He does that in. Uh, Oh, uh, bitch is another solo. It is a lot of that. You know, he'll he'll just that kind of stuff. But it's all in that pentatonic box, the Chuck Berry pentatonic box. Chuck tended to do um, 
a lot more major pentatonic than Keith did or does. I don't think Keith plays a whole lot of lead anymore, but back in six, on the 69 tour, he still was doing quite a bit of it. Um, so that, that, that's basically the idea. I'm not going to go through all phrase for phrase, because once you know... I guess I'll teach you that last lick. <laughs> uh, try, uh, and again, this is another one. Another one that's a Chuck Berry lick that you do up and down the neck anyway. B and E at the same fret, whether it's 3, 5, or whatever, this one's 5. And then uh, bend up the G, starting two frets up from that. That's that minor pentatonic box that we've been... You know, it's the same minor pentatonic box that you always, always use for blues-based rock. Um, and that's how you do those. So play around with those and, and you'll, you'll see, except for during the solo when he does a, a brief run that goes a little bit higher. Keith is sticking right in that A box. Um, like that and what's but so you know the box once you know that sit down and play along with it or invent your own legs if you listen to other bootlegs from the 69 tour um, Keith wasn't doing those identically every time he had a sort of a, a vague skeleton in mind and did them very similarly but all the solos are different all the licks are a little bit different so uh, I suggest you do the same good luck <laughs>